Good day everyone, this is Sir JP Lagamayo who will deliver to you a short PISA-like review in science. So pay closer attention as we discuss scientific questions that needs to be analyzed and comprehended for better exam results. So here we go. Let's try to have an example number one. So for the question or for the item number one, this is pertaining to the topic about the bird's migration. You have to refer to the bird migration on the right and try to read the statement and also kindly also take a look at the illustration. The statement is, bird migration is a seasonal large-scale movement of birds to and from their breeding grounds. Every year, volunteers count migrating the birds at the specific locations. Scientists capture some of the birds and tug their legs, as what is seen on the picture, with a combination of colored rings and flags. The scientists use sightings of tagged birds together with volunteers count to determine the migratory routes of birds. So this is the illustration as presented. Let us try to refer with the question. Most migratory birds gather in one area and then migrate in large group rather than individually. This behavior is a result of evolution. Which of the following is the best scientific explanation for the evolution of this behavior in most migratory birds? So the best possible answer here is, of course, the letter A. But before discussing the best possible answer, let us try to look at the following options A, B, C, and D. Let us try to compare them. Let us try to read option letter A. Birds that migrated individually or in groups were less likely to survive and have an offspring because this has a lesser possibility of survival when they are in a smaller or individualized um, system. So that's mainly the reason why this is the most or the best possible answer. Hindi po makaka-survive kapag nag-iisa lang yung bird eh, or sabihin po natin na si smaller um, group lang yung uh, birds species. So, let's try to look at letter B. Birds that migrated individually or in small groups were more likely to find adequate food. This is incorrect. It's because larger group of birds have more advantage of finding foods rather than a smaller group of bird species. So, this is definitely incorrect, letter B. Take a look at letter C. Flying in large groups allowed other birds species to join the migration. While it is possible that in a large group, some bird species may join, however, this is not a direct evolutionary advantage for primary migratory birds. Yeah, so they are definitely considered as an incorrect option also. And letter D, flying in large groups allowed each bird to have a better chance of finding a nesting site. This is still not correct because migration is primarily for the seasonal survival and breeding, not for locating a nesting site of the bird. So I'm hoping that you can... Uh, uh, at least try to analyze the best possible answer here is letter A. Because the birds that migrated individually or in smaller groups were less likely to survive and have offspring. So definitely this is the best possible answer here in our item number one. Next, let's proceed with the item number two. Bird migration, still the same with the first one, but uh, definitely they have different scenario of answers. Right, let's try to read. 
Bird migration is a seasonal large-scale movement of birds to, to and from their breeding grounds. Every year, volunteers count migrating birds as a specific location. Scientists capture some of the birds and tag their legs with a combination of colored rings and flags. The scientists use sightings of tagged birds together with volunteers count to determine the migratory routes of the birds. So that is somehow similar to the previous uh, paragraph that we have read or mentioned. Now, your task is to identify a factor that might make the volunteer's count of migrating birds inaccurate and explain how that factor will affect the count. So our right answers here are the observers may miss counting some birds because they fly high. All right, that's uh, one point. Another point, if the same birds are counted more than once, that can make the numbers too high, meaning to say uh, th they can count uh, one particular bird as twice. So that would add up to the total number of uh, the bird species flying high. For birds in a large group, volunteers can only estimate how many birds there are. So definitely that's another answer for estimation. The observers might be wrong about what kind of bird they are, so the numbers of that kind of bird will be wrong. So that is another answer. The birds migrate at night. Yeah, there's a possibility of that. Volunteers or observers will not be everywhere the birds migrate. The observers can make a small mistake in counting and clouds or rain can hide some of the birds. So some of the several factors that may affect their answers here or your answers here would involve the following. Number one, birds flying too high. When birds fly at high altitudes, they are harder to see, so observers may miss counting some of them, leading to an undercount. And number two here, double counting the same birds. If volunteers accidentally count the same birds more than once, this can inflate the numbers making the counts higher than the usual number or the actual number of birds. Large group estimation, when birds are in large groups, it becomes challenging to count each one precisely. Volunteers might only be able to make a rough estimate leading to a less accurate counts. Number four, species identification errors. Observers might misidentify bird species, which can distort the counts for a particular species, especially if two species look similar. And then number five, night migration. Many birds migrate at night, so observers cannot see them and are likely to miss large numbers of birds altogether. Number six is the limited observation location. Since volunteers can only cover specific locations, they won't capture all migrating birds along their routes, leading to gaps in the data. Number seven is counting mistakes. Human error in counting can lead to undercounts or overcounts. That is always a possibility. And of course, lastly, all about the weather conditions, all about the clouds, poor weather can obscure visibility, making it difficult for observers to see and accurately count the birds. So these are the underlying factors why um, there's a possibility that volunteers count may be inaccurate most specifically if they are just using their eyes in counting the number of bird species that are flying above the sky. So that is for the item number two. Next, we have the item number three. Let us now proceed to item number three, and this is still related to birds migration. You have to refer to the golden plovers on the right side. And uh, let us try to read. Bird migration, golden plovers. 
Golden plovers are migratory birds that breed in northern Europe. In autumn, the birds travel to where it is warmer and where more food is available. In spring, the birds travel back to their breeding grounds. The maps below are based on more than 10 years of research on the migration of the golden plover. Map 1 shows the southward migratory routes of the golden plover during autumn, and Map 2 shows the northward migratory routes during spring. Areas colored gray are land and areas colored white are water. The thickness of the arrows indicate uh, the size of the migrating groups of birds. So let's try to take a look at the map 1 and then map 2. We have to analyze both of the maps in order for us to answer the question. So we have here, um, we are tasked here to um, analyze the two maps presented and we are to select one or more answers relating to the map. So, ayan, sabi dito, remember to select one or more boxes. Let's try to identify the best possible answers or answer here. If there is, let's try to look at the option number one. The maps show a decrease in the number of golden plovers migrating southwards in the past 10 years. Do you think this is accurate? They have mentioned about for the past 10 years, but the map shows uh, no evidence of year here. So there's no history. So definitely, the option number one here is incorrect. Option number two, the maps show that northward migratory routes of some golden plovers are, are different from southward migratory routes. Definitely, we can see here that the map 2, ayan po, we have uh, the northern or the northward migratory routes are typically different from the cycle or from the system of the southward migratory routes. So this option is already correct. Next option. The maps show that migratory golden plovers spend their winter in areas that are south and southwest of their breeding or nesting ground. Definitely, we can see here that this is still correct. Oh, makikita po natin because they are just describing the southward migratory routes. Next option is the maps show that migratory routes of the golden plover have shifted away from coastal areas in the past 10 years. So they have not specified here in our maps about the past 10 years. So definitely, this option is still considered as incorrect. So I'm hoping that uh, at least uh, by this review, you can learn something on how to critique on how to answer your piece like review or piece like exam. So I'm hoping for your next support in our next chapter of this review. So kindly like and comment down your year level section and then your last name for attendance purposes. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, kindly click subscribe and be notified with the latest academic review that we will have. So thank you so much. This is Sir JP Lagamayo and I'm hoping the best for your post exam in PCLIC. Thank you so much. Goodbye.